Dead on Arrival, or Dick on Acid, or Dead or Alive. I'm Justin. The makers of this film like butts almost as much as I do. I'm Sam, and this is DOA the Movie on Stinker Madness. What's that smell? I don't know about you, but I'm thirsty as fuck. Thirsty, thirsty, thirsty as fuck. Hey, look at me! Thrill me. If you come back in here, I'm gonna hit you with so many rides, you're gonna beg for a left. Thrill me. Beg for a left. Thrill me. Hey, look at me! No more hangers! It stinks. Hello, welcome to Stinger Madness. This is the Yada Yada about the Yada Yada. I'm your host, Justin. With me, as always, is Sam. Uh, this week on the show, 2006, Dead or Alive, DOA, the video game movie about DOA, the fighting game that has jiggle physics. It does. It wasn't real, like, do I play this game or just stare at, just start matches to watch the boob shake? That was like DOA 4, I had that one. And then they embraced it fully by making DOA volleyball with just the female characters. So it was just them jumping up and down a lot. (laughs) They aren't the sort of progenitor of the boob physics. I feel like the first time I noticed it, I don't know how early it was, was the Soul Calibur games. Okay. You'd be like, they like do a super flyback before the match, and then the boobs would just shake everywhere. And you're like, this is too distracting. I can't play this game. Do you think if the technology had existed, that that wouldn't be the case? And instead, it would have been Chung Lee in Street Fighter 2? If Chung Lee would have had physics, the streets would have been covered in semen. <laughs> Uh, gross. I'm glad that didn't happen. Um, yeah, yeah. I didn't imagine. I didn't play DOA. I didn't play um, Soul Calibur mostly because I stink at fighting games. Um, I don't get it. I I want to like fighting games, but I'm just so bad at them that I like. Oh, I'm gonna get this fighting game, and, I, and then I play it for five minutes. And I'm like, no, I suck. Usually, what happens is you invite me over. You're like, I got the fighting game, uh-huh. and then I beat your ass like a rented mule and you're like this is not fun yeah there's just too many like button like even if you're playing by yourself um you the you the call to do the sweet moves you can you want to be the kind of guy that is like okay i can i can block now's when i block block okay now i, I counter with a with a leg sweep you want to be that guy but in the back of your mind there's always like Dude, if I learn the pattern, the button pattern, I can like do a, a backbreaker or I can rip his spine out. Uh, and so you're, the whole time you're just trying to do these sweet moves and you, you're just getting pummeled by the computer because they're not doing the sweet moves. No, I I like the fighting games and I was very good at Street Fighter because it's the sort of most or least nuanced in terms of... Uh, these are when you can perform this. There's a lot of reaction more than action. Mm-hmm. Like they're in this spot of the animation. You just sort of get to where you know the flow of a game and you get good enough that like people that are really good at Street Fighter 2 when they play each other, it's usually whoever lands the first one is going to steamroll from that point. It's like once the first mistake is made, the animation dictates that the fight is over. Yeah. Tekken and Virtual Fighter kind of took it to a new level of button combos versus the just stick movement or the do a half moon in this button, then you throw a super thing. They went more into combos and some reactability. DOA is the one where countering versus blocking or striking is the most important thing. And how fast that game's animations are, that was when I realized I was too old for fighting games. Because it is just too hard to recognize when to perform a counter because of all the different animations. Like, you have to play that game so goddamn much to be good at it. Hmm. And people are good at it. 
I was okay at DOA, but if I played a kid in Japan that actually knew how to do it on the internet, my ass was grass. Yeah. Uh, okay, I could so, still hold my own against the Japanese kids in Street Fighter. So how? Uh, when when did you walk away from DOA, or have you? I haven't played a DOA since four. Okay. okay, I couldn't play it because it was hard, and that four was like, I got to where I think in two I could still pretty well play, but in four it was like, this is really hard. There's a lot of nuance to this game, and God damn it, I can't. Get that nuance because these boobies are shaking around <laughs> everywhere. You got to watch their hands and their feet and their waist. And I can't because their tit jiggle all over the screen. <laughs> all right. So let me ask you this. Uh, is there a story to DOA, the video game franchise? If this movie is the story to DOA 2. Is it? Like okay. their story in Street Fighter. And they kind of followed the story in Street Fighter and Street Fighter the movie. The, we were actually going to do that if it would have been more available to viewers and listeners of the program. But it's really hard to find. And it was on a, what was it, on a Peacock it's or something? It's on Peacock, yeah. And Peacock's on very limited devices. So we just, we're, we'll save that for later. And we can probably, you know, lamp, line it up with a Mortal Kombat movie. Because they just... Can't stop putting that shit in the theater. Oh, don't worry. We're going to talk about Mortal Kombat at the end of this episode. Um, All right. Yeah, and and we will circle back to. I think we th there's episodes inbound of both the other the other two Mortal Kombat movies that we haven't talked about or or done. Um, but yeah, okay. So DOA does have a story. Uh, it's you go to I guess an island and and have a tournament fight. Yeah, it's aligned with Ninja Gaiden. At some level, it's I don't know if it's really a spinoff all the way, because I feel like Ryu Hayubasa, the Ninja Gaiden character, mm -hmm. isn't like as big a part of the story in DOA until DOA 2. But I feel like he's in the first one. So maybe it is a Ninja Gaiden spinoff. But either way, it's just Techno's like Tecmo was like, we don't have a fighting game. We need one. Let's put chicks and skimpy outfits in it. Yeah, the first one, I don't remember if the first one had as much of what the fourth one has, which is just too much shaking of the butts and boobs. Is there too much? Which if <laughs> I don't know, play black desert and you tell me what's black desert. Black desert's a MMORPG that was developed in Korea. And not only does it have butt physics, thigh physics and breast physics, you can basically just collagen all of the boobs and butts to be as big as you want. So you're just <laughs> watching a fucking jiggle factory instead of playing a goddamn game that's supposed to be like you could do it's got every sort of transaction that you could have in a game there's every sort of farming mechanic that you can have in a game but more than anything it's just got huge butts and boobs <laughs> shaking around <laughs> shaking everywhere and it's an MMORG or RPG so all these boobs and butts you're looking at are just boys <laughs> They're just boys Other playing these dudes in basements <laughs> yeah, playing jiggle that want to stare at butts and boobs <laughs> shake everywhere. They're just like the main complaint of the game is the giant boob bar has an end of it. <laughs> I can't crush the world with breast physics. <laughs> you can only drag the boobs up to be gargantuan and shaky. <laughs> I can't actually make boobs that are so large they cause gravitational problems with the earth. <laughs> title, title physics. Titty title yeah. physics. <laughs> That's insane. I got to check this game out. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You're going to be like, can, I, I got to have important work to do, honey. I got to get back in there. <laughs> so much important work I'm doing in my office. Okay, uh, tell us what you know about the film DOA. Uh, the director, Corey Yen, is... I love this guy's movies. Okay. Uh, a Ninja in the Dragon's Den is one of his, oh, yeah. his second or first movie. Wow. It is fucking awesome. Yeah. If you like martial arts movies, it is amazing. Yeah, that's... I love it. That's borderline Hall of Fame stuff. Uh, it's, the problem is that Ninja in the Dragon's Den might actually be a good movie <laughs> yeah it's for i mean it's just a for martial if you have to have a sub subgenre of martial arts films then you have to decide which ones are good that one's good yeah exactly exactly uh that's surprising okay what else 
Uh, he did Transporter. Okay. This, I like Transporter. I do too. This guy's movies are fun. It's not like he's going to win any Academy Awards. This thing was a financial disaster. Sure. It cost but, thirty hold million. On, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, uh, why would you get the guy that made a very? I mean, it's silly, but very dark and grittier toned movie. I mean, if I think about like the tone of Transporter, it's blue. It's a blue film. Everything's filtered blue because it wants to be this blue film, and that's the tone of it. It's a, a, a dreary, almost like a dreary world that the that the Transporter takes in. Whereas this is like colors. It's yeah, an odd choice. Uh, it's not an odd choice. Jamie Presley did this movie because she wanted to work with Corey Yen. Okay. Uh, Jason Statham does the transporter because he wants to do work with Corey Yen. Okay. This guy is like, I mean, his karate movies are renowned mm-hmm. or his martial arts films are renowned. Um, this effectively ends his career yeah, because sucks. it tanked so hard. Yeah. It cost thirty million. It only made oh seven God. million to worldwide back, and its release is shaky at best. Um, this was idea. the first time that there was a collaboration of Western film and Chinese film at the main uh, Hangdian Studio, which is the largest studio in the world, mm-hmm. has vast resources uh, to do this. Corey Yen, they didn't have; they only had one translator, and he kind of had this expectation that everybody kind of had to know what they were doing when they show up because they're going to go at a breakneck speed in order to get this thing done with all the other things that are happening at the studio. He had two cinematographers. I don't know if you noticed that in the the credits, but it wasn't like, here's our main cinematographer and here's the assistant camera that's also running a second unit. It was two full units going for 17 hours a day. Wow. Huh. And when they got it back, it was a little long. I think it went through some massive cuts. The test audience, the Chinese test audience didn't like it. So they cut it. They did a bunch of stuff to it. They took the nudity out. Mm. There was nudity originally. Mm. Uh, I think that was, there was a, there's a lot of it when you watch this. He's really just like, I want to put this game in the movie. And the only way to like, I real boobs don't jiggle that much. So I guess I just got to get these girls to take them out. And then an Eastern audience is like, put those back, damn it. <laughs> put those boobies back where they go. We're a conservative culture here, god damn it. No titties everywhere. <laughs> Until you go to Japan and you you find out some Yeah, weird this is China. Stuff. China is yeah. a lot more conservative than Japan. Japan is not very conservative. I don't, I don't know if you watched the, uh, the QAnon documentary that's on HBO, but... Uh, they he, the filmmaker goes to Japan and one of the places that likely who Q is uh, the guy that owns a Chan uh, t- talks to him about Soapland and Soapland is this he calls it the the Disneyland but with soap and uh, you go there and basically a lady lubes you up with soap and then she just kind of slides all over you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I just Thank have you. never been behind any of it. I think I've bitched about the podcast uh, on the podcast about strip clubs multiple times and just like, why am I going to go spend money to not have sex when I could just find somebody like, why is it find a bar fly soap land? Why would you, why are you, why are you doing that to yourself? <laughs> Getting all worked. I'm sure it might be fun for a minute, but you're like, okay, can we screw now? And you're like, no, we can't. This is soap land. It's just this weird stuff happens continuously, and you leave with a boner that you like beat to death when you get home. I guess you can't. You okay? So if you are at a, a adult theme park, let's just call it, you don't live there. You are covered in soap. You don't just leave. You got to you got to clean the soap off. So, you know what you're going to do in the shower? Uh, <laughs> I With feel like bros. I probably should go to big, soap. It's got to be you don't have personal I showers. I don't want to <laughs> think about soap land. Cuz he's like, let's go you got to see this place. Dude, you and I are going to love soap land together. Mm. No. <laughs> to the documentary maker. He's like, "No, I don't want to go to soap land." Can we just talk about uh-huh. you? <laughs> so weird. Okay. Um, what else you got? 
Uh, so yeah, anyway, Corian, check his stuff out. He's done 31 movies. He did uh, the choreography for Wildcard. It seems like he's retired now. 2016 is the last I find anything that he did. And after this movie, he basically just gets put back into choreography. Okay. Like he doesn't get to direct again after this, mm-hmm. which is really too bad because his movies are a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, Jamie Presley. Mm-hmm. She's stacked. Like that's she's got muscles. For this movie, she, yeah, she got ripped. Uh, she's ripped. Like, I was like, what the hell? You could probably beat me up. Yeah, yeah. She did a really good job beefing up for this role. The Holly Vance was Christy, mm-hmm. Jamie Presley, Tina, Devin Aoki, Kasumi, and Sarah Carter, the Helen Douglas, Helena, the roller skater. Mm-hmm. They did four months of training in martial arts and wire work to do this movie. Wow. Before they even showed up. Yeah. And you can goddamn tell. Yeah. Yeah. Because, uh, I mean, I don't know who Holly Vance is. Uh, uh, Devin, a- a- how do you say her name? The It's either Devon or Devin Aoki. Aoki. She did some other stuff. She was in. Uh, She's in Fast 2 and Fast 3, 2, yeah. She drives the pink S2000 in, in Fast 2. She was in Sin City. Um, and then, uh, the lady that played Helena, I don't know who that is, but they, these guys aren't, these guys aren't Michelle Yao, right? I mean, they're not martial art superstars. These are nobodies that no. did a really good job with martial arts. And they did a really good job with martial arts because they showed up and fucking learned it. Yeah. And they have to be on screen with fucking Colin Chow and Kane Kasugi. Right. You can't fake it when you're up there with those guys. Right. You got to know what you're goddamn doing. Yeah. And to a lesser, I mean, Eric Roberts is in the movie, but Eric Roberts was in Best of the Best, he's and the he's best done best. training, too. Yeah. He's just older now, and Still he's stupid. actually, he's so, it's weird because you're like, you know how much of a dork he is, uh-huh. and you're like, why are you, I guess you keep up with the weights so you don't look bad, and you get in the fighting movies, but I know that you're just the nerdiest, nicest man. Right. But still, Why are you always in these movies? It vexes me. You spent $30 million on a movie that has Eric Roberts in it. That's... And you know that Eric Roberts is there because he's in Best of the Best. Like, everybody in this is somehow connected to these fighting movies, except for the, the girls that are brought in because they're super hot. Right. But then they were like, hey, by the way, you're going to be martial artists when you come out of this. You're not even going to get to shoot for four months. You're going to learn how to do all this shit. It's just, four it's months. so weird to me that they thought that they were going to make money on it. That, I mean, is DOA even that popular of a video game? Other than No, the I think physics? that's why they thought they were going to make money on it is because it was relatively unknown. You have everything in this that should make money. And really one of the reasons it doesn't make money is because the Chinese market kind of stumbled it so bad. It doesn't make it to the U S theater until 2007. And then it gets a really bad minor release in places that it wouldn't do well. Right. Like this probably be, it could have at least broke even had they not dropped the ball on it. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, Still 30 I'm minutes. fine either way That's because a high I love day. it. I have the there is a shitload of deleted scenes, mm-hmm. which is one of the reasons why I have this. Okay, um, that are all fun. That should have been in the movie. It would be nice if they if it wasn't such a tank and it didn't end this man's career. There's probably would have been a director's cut that I would have forced on the it versus just the normal version of this movie. Okay, um, that didn't happen. Also, Jamie Presley. Okay, did you know? She was legally emancipated from her parents at the age of 15. Wow. Not because she didn't like her parents. She was already that much of a model that she got an offer, a very lucrative offer in Japan. And you couldn't go without her parents. So the only way, and they were like, we can't go. Mm -hmm. We still have to work. This might not work out for you. We have jobs. Right. So the only way for it to work out, I guess, is that she had to become legally emancipated so that she could go work in Japan at the age of 15. Hmm. Fun fact. And then comes back. And it's weird because it's like you always knew who Jamie Presley was. She gets an Emmy for My Name is Earl, right? Oh, okay. She's great in that. Didn't know that. Um, But 
you really look at her career before then, you're like, I guess, why do I know who she is? Just because I guess she's really pretty and was on magazines all the time Poison and was Ivy. in enough shows. She was in Poison Ivy. What? Yeah, she's in the Poison Ivy 2 or 3 or 1 of them, And that, right? was, that was in the before time where if we wanted to see Naked Hot Ladies, we had to watch Cinemax. We didn't have the yeah. internet, so she, she was the Naked Hot Lady. She is the Naked Hot Lady, and she was real young in that movie. Yeah. I don't know. It's got to be like 18, maybe 19. Mm-hmm. Hopefully. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Hopefully. <laughs> Probably not going to revisit that one. No, no. Because I'll not. feel creepy either way. Yeah, definitely not. Because it's that. creepy, the movie. That's what it is. It's yeah. like, I'm jailbait. Bang me. And you're like, what? Well, no. No. Uh-uh. Yeah. Yeah. Gross. Um, yeah, no. And, and then she was great in, uh, uh, even though the movie's terrible, she's she's great in uh, not another teen movie. Yeah. Uh, what does you do around here, Consuela? And they look at each other. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty pretty funny. She's really good in that. Um, she's a funny person. Uh, I maybe maybe her hotness hurt her career because I think she probably could have been in a lot more fun movies, and she just kind of isn't. Yeah, she's not, and it's probably because she's too hot, I guess. Yeah. That sucks for her. Yeah, it Maybe does. it doesn't. I think she's done all right. Yeah. I mean, even like even if she'd been in some of the better uh, uh, sci-fi original, not even the sci-fi originals, but like, you know, like Elizabeth Shue was in Piranha Double D. Uh, that would have been a good movie for uh, uh, her to be in. Uh, movies like that. Yeah. Uh, what was the one that had Richard Dreyfus in the beginning of it? And he gets, is this, that's, isn't that a Sharknado where Richard Dreyfus isn't fishing in the boat and he gets eaten? I don't know. Yeah. I know he's in Jaws. Like, like, yeah, right. Exactly. Uh, if, if you can get Richard Dreyfus, uh, you can get Jamie Presley. Uh, she could have been in the Sin City movies. Uh, perfect fit for, her. Uh, you know, you know, like why not more Jamie Presley? I, I don't get that. Yeah, I don't either, because, yeah, she's very pretty. She's very funny. She does a good job on the stuff that yeah. she's in. She does a good job on this one. She's great. Yeah. Yeah, it's just weird. Anyways, anybody else we're going to talk about? We'll just talk about them as they hit. Okay. All right. Well, I'm ready to get this going. Uh, This is another one of these. Oh, my gosh. What is happening already, movies? Um, we Our first person that we get talked to uh, about is Princess Kasumi. Uh, she is the the ruler she's basically queen elizabeth her brother has abdicated the throne uh to go fight in doa uh and so now she's sitting on the throne and ruling over the country of the kingdom of kasumi kasumi kingdom she's a it's because it's tied into ninja gaiden she's like in the ninja clan koga or iga or whatever Mm -hmm. it is and so she's the the head of the clan even though it seems like her dad is in this, and he's just like sleepy or something. He doesn't want to do it anymore. I don't know. There's an old guy's like, "Oh, you got to go kill her." Yeah, I'm assuming that's her dad. I don't know, but she is a princess. I don't know. They call her the princess. Yeah, she's the princess. So maybe she's the heir apparent now that her brother's at large. Yeah. Well, she's told that he's, he's missing. Dead. Yeah, he's dead. Well, if there's no body, so it's all then up he's to her. Not dead. Also, if you leave. Then you're banished and you're a shinobi and we have to kill you. I'm not really sure why she can't go anywhere. That seems like it sucks. That seems like it really sucks. And isn't like being a shinobi cool because of the shinobi games? Yeah. I don't know. There's a book called Shinobi that's basically like Ninja Romeo and Juliet. There's a lot of stuff based on it. It's a really good time. Yeah. Being a shinobi sounds cool. It's a cool name. Anyways, so she's like, no, I'm going to leave. I'm going to find him. You guys can fuck off. Uh, I am your ruler, and you have to obey me. And they're like, yeah, but we're sworn to kill you. or We're honor-bound to kill you if you leave. No, that's not honorable. Like, then I'm a slave, or you know, or you kidnap me, and that's not honorable. No, fuck your honor-bound. Uh, and so she walks off. But she stopped. She by. doesn't walk off. She well, like there's another gal that's like a super Aoni. ninja too. Yeah, yeah, Annie. And then they like sort of fight. But then she's like, I don't even need to fight you. Look at how awesome my martial arts are. She like runs over dudes that are kneeling's heads, like air walking uh-huh. basically at the speed of a sword that she throws and uses as a springboard to jump over a giant wall. And you're like, oh, she can fly. Holy shit. Yeah. 
but she's got a parachute and you're like okay wait underneath she had her a parachute this whole time underneath her princess robes whatever those are called uh it's not a gi it's a one whatever those things are the the princesses wear she's got an entire yeah. jet powered rocket hang glider attached Thing. to her and right as she jumps off like this ninja star kind of thing with a readout like she catches it and she's like it's all doa you're invited and then there's a cool action graphic that says doa invitation kasumi it's awesome you're like what the fuck is happening right now this is amazing i was i was very sold during the scene at first i was pretty leery going into this movie probably because i thought it was directed by ue bowl um and also because i know people video game people hate this movie so i was like okay is this going to be another in the name of the king dungeon siege or nope this is this has got bullshit okay all right we're going we're doing this yeah good good stuff cut to tina armstrong she's getting yacht jacked because i guess that's a thing yep she's the pirates in the south asian sea Jack and her yacht. <laughs> Did you recognize who the pirate leader was? Uh, yeah, he's, he looked familiar. It's Robin Show, the guy that's the main in uh, the Mortal Kombat from one and two. Oh yeah, yeah, good point. Yeah, he's just doing a cameo because he's buddies with uh, Corey Yen. Oh okay, yeah. Uh, she whips all their asses. She's super tough. Uh, we find out she's a wrestler. She doesn't want to wrestle anymore. Yeah, she's tired of fake fighting. She wants people to know that she's really tough. Yeah. So she beats the shit out of these pirates. And this is where we, we kind of talked about before, like, holy shit, she's jacked. Like, every time I watch this, and I've seen this like four times now, I am just astounded by her physique. Like, all these CrossFit people on the TV, it's like, you need to get a hold of Jimmy Press to get a load of her right. and maybe work harder. Yeah. Because good God, she's stacked. Yeah. You know, do you like, do you like ripped women? Jamie Presley in this movie, but not really. You know, I used to not like it. I used to be, I liked, I liked him soft and squishy. Uh, I kind of like it now. I kind of like those ripped shoulders on ladies. I think it's kind of hot. Yeah. Sarah Carter, the gal from Smallville, that's the skating lady. She's pretty muscular as well. Yeah. yeah I think that's kind of cool. I respect it. I like it. I wouldn't kick it out of bed for doing push ups. <laughs> Push-ups in a bed would be hard. Or beating the crap out of me. (laughs) Maybe maybe the older I get, the more uh, masochistic I get. (laughs) Can you step on my balls? Here, Jackie, here's some weights. Lift these so that you can punch me in the balls harder. (laughs) Speed bagging! I need to feel anything. (laughs) Uh, I need to remember what it was like to be alive. Um, Okay, so uh, then she gets the invite to DOA. The same batarang flies in. Yep. uh, She's now in cool next up is christy uh she is a jewel thief and master assassin i guess uh yeah but she's getting arrested in a towel like the fbi is barged into her hotel room while she's showering and the guy's like hey you're under arrest for whoa boy timing (laughs) yeah he's like i have to put you under arrest for the creation of boners (laughs) That's illegal in my pants. Well, she busts out. Brafu. Boom. That just go right over your head? She. Bu- oh, yeah, busts out. Okay. Yeah. This was the one of the I, nude scenes. I got it written down. I, I even put underlined Brafu. busts, yeah. you know, because yeah. I want to make sure everybody gets that joke that I was the one that said it. Okay. Give me a trophy. <laughs> or a bust? <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, yep, she busts out, and uh, she steals some old man's clothes on the way out. She stuffs that poor man into a suitcase. She broke his spine. You can't get a man into a suitcase without folding him in half. She, that poor man. That was a dick. That was a total dick move. It was a total dick move. And she gets invited to DOA on her escape motorcycle. Yay. Uh, cut to, I guess that's our introductions. Helena doesn't really get, even though she's a core lady, she's part she's of the there. island. 
she's part of the island. We don't get the invitation. We see Max, who's Matthew Marsden. Uh, we've seen Kane Kasugi's character already. Hayabasa. But, yeah, he's Ryu Hayabasa. Mm-hmm. And, but now we're just whisked away to the DOA plane. Yeah, the private. They're all riding, and they're like. Stream. And then Jamie Presley's like, Dad, what are you doing here? <laughs> and he's like. I'm awesome because I'm fucking Kevin Nash. And you're like, yes, you are Kevin Nash. <laughs> oh, I was like, Kevin Nash? Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this movie's got it all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. And uh, uh, Hayabasa is there. He, he, he got invited. Yeah. Uh, and she's like, what are you doing here? He's like, I love... Uh, I'm your bro's best friend, but also I'm good at kicking ass. And then uh, Christy is like, she sees her ex-boyfriend and she's like, what are you doing here? And he's like, yep. I guess I can fight people to death. Did you know that? Because I didn't know that. Because he can't. Also, <laughs> I'm going to rip your nuts off. <laughs> right. She hates him. Yeah. She is like, stay very far away from that guy. He is a total dick. Yeah. For about five And then minutes. Zach comes in with his butt haircut. Oh, and God, starts Zach. Just being the biggest tool. God and damn. everybody is like, what is this asshole doing here? I know. God damn it, this guy. Why do they always have to have this guy in these movies? Why is there always one of him? He redeems himself later. Yeah, kind of. Turns out to not be a bad guy, but he's a total dick bag right. on the front end of this thing. And everybody is really like, God damn it. Just shut up and go away. Oh, man. He's awful. He's he's Coolio in Dracula 2000 awful. Yeah. Like, why do you guys? But so- he's doing it on purpose and he's doing a good job. I'm going to give Brian J. White the nod for doing a perfect job making me hate him. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so they're like, Helena comes on and she's like, okay, so here's how DOA works. Um, you guys are going to jump out of this airplane and the last one, or if you don't make it to the compound by eight at sundown, you don't get, you're disqualified. So I just got a free flight to this island and I get to hang out and I don't have to get my ass kicked. Okay, cool. Yeah. I'm going to hang out also, on the beach. More, <laughs> more parachuting. Awesome. <laughs> so they all bail out. Uh, the ladies... Uh, our three leads are very bad p- parachuters because the one thing about parachuting is you can pretty much land wherever you like. That's kind of how you're it good works. at it. Yeah, there's like you you can pull and and glide to where you need to be. Instead, they just land directly in the ocean, getting all of their pants wet. Maybe there was a gust of wind that they didn't anticipate. <laughs> I don't know. Kasumi, when she bails out, she's kind of like she almost does a flying squirrel thing for a little bit. Uh, yeah. I think she knows what she's doing with the parachute. Oh, yeah. Maybe the, it's the South Sea Pervoso wind. Mm. Mm-hmm. Get these ladies wet. <laughs> and then they have to climb up this ridiculous tower to get there via the yeah. power of wire work. It's... And teamwork makes the dream work. Right. <laughs> they're like, I don't even like you people. And they're like, all right, girls, we're going to have to teen up. And they're like, Okay. Are we super best friends? Yeah, we are. Oh my gosh. And their team up is they they climb the they ascend the tower via the power of teamwork in ridiculous fashion. It is so stupid. Yep. Aoki or Kasumi climbs up Tina's tramp stamp. Oh my god. So dumb. And it looks her terrible out. because the wire work is so like extreme. I mean, they they mm-hmm. jump like 40 feet by getting uh-huh. tossed. It is insanely stupid. Wow. And then now next step, now that you're part of it, you have to have an underwear physical examination. Uh-huh. Take your clothes off. We're going to give a look at you. And then they, I think they, they scan their, well, they put the nanites in. Yeah, they put the nanotech in them so that they can monitor their fighting physicality. Uh-huh. And also their business. breast size. Because uh-huh. when the nanites go in, you get a physical scan of their innards that looks like a, an x-ray, but the x-ray has boobs. Yep. So, yeah. It's like, there's the only important parts, according to these x-rays, are like, their GI tract and their titties. <laughs> 
Everything looks like it's in order here. <laughs> A lot of churning and bubbling down there, and looks like there's a party up top. All right. <laughs> Checks out. How are their jiggle physics? Good. Good jiggle physics. Just poke them a couple times, see what happens. <laughs> uh, yeah, so now we, now we get Donovan, Eric Roberts' character. He is the head. He's the head cheese. He's the one that runs the corporation that puts DOA together. And uh, is organizing this whole thing with the help of his right man, hand man named Weatherby, who is basically just an IT guy. Yes, Weatherby is the IT guy. I call him, for the purposes of this film, Dorkmeyer. Yeah, Dorkmeyer is good. <laughs> uh, so, DOA time. Much fighting ensues. Uh, lots of first rounders get knocked out. Um, I'm not real clear why the why the game is called uh dead or alive because this is not mortal combat you no. just knock your opponent out yep so, and they don't have to kill him but i guess there's accidents like in the game or in this movie in the movie world yeah well is it is there fatalities in the game sam no then why is not it called that i know dead or alive i don't know it's a misappropriate title should be like knockout fest or something like that yeah and i don't know because like again with my fighting game experience when i finally got to this one by the time it comes into fruition it's now just the boob shaking game mm -hmm. and maybe that's why fans of the game series hate it because they're like this should just be soapy tits shaking in front of me for two hours <laughs> i want to go to soap land i hate this movie <laughs> Uh, okay. Um, I wonder how soap Soapland's doing with the COVID. You know, they had to shut down. Well, the, you know, the soap is good, yeah. right? <laughs> they're using bleach. They took the president's word for it. Now they're just sliding around in bleach. No, that's not going to be any good. <laughs> We're COVID free. <laughs> okay. All right. So, uh, Kasumi. She has a flashback to when she was a prisoner at some point. I guess. The Viet Cong got her because that's what these guys look like. There were ninjas. ninjas. The rival ninja clan has captured her, but her brother Hayate, who's Colin Chow, uh -huh. famed martial artist, is able to vanquish them with his ninja magic and all that stuff. Via the power of acupuncture. Yes. Acupuncture is a powerful healing tool, but in the hands of a ninja can be deadly. I think I think what this scene sets up is a that her brother's uh, good at karate, um, but also that if you use his acupuncture needles in this one specific place, you will paralyze your opponent. Mm hmm. OK. So Donovan comes in, he visits her and he's like, hey, I am uh, here to tell you your brother was killed by Leon. That's a. I, 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 that's the best Eric Roberts I can do. My sister Julia, <laughs> yeah, which is uh, my, Rob Lowe's Eric Roberts, is probably the worst Eric Roberts, even though it's yeah, the most it's, famous. It's the most famous because you couldn't do a better, you couldn't do a worse job. Right. <laughs> um, Leon is one of the fighters. We get to see him do his stuff. He doesn't seem like he's a bad guy, so she's like, um, I don't know about that. A, my brother's awesome. B, Leon's not that bad of a guy. So my suspicions of what is happening are my my uh, princess sense is tingling. Yeah. Did she already take the rose petal bath? I don't. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I think she, before she fights Leon and decides that he's not good enough to kill her brother because she kicks his ass pretty nice. Mm -hmm. Uh there's a scene with her and uh, Kane Kasugi where she gets out of a rose petal bath and she's like touching yeah. his face and he's like, my boner is not worthy of you. Yes, that is right. For here. the first of several times. Yeah, because uh, this is where they team up. She's like, Donovan's lying about my brother's death. Uh, we need to team up to find my bro because I don't think he's dead. And he's like, okay, because all of his blood is out of his head. Um, Christy mm -hmm. and Max. They have decided to break into the vault where it's not just 10 million inside. It's 100 million inside. Uh-huh. Uh, so now they've got their own side plot. 
But first, Kasumi is matched immediately to fight Leon. Oh, how convenient, Donovan. Oh, you're just going to uh, set this up like, oh, yeah, well, now I'm definitely not suspicious that the first person I fight is the guy who supposedly you just came in and told me kill my brother. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Right. And, uh, but first she's attacked by Ayani in her, her room. This lady has also made it to DOA to hunt her down and fulfill the honor bound duty of killing your princess who has left her castle. Yeah. And I really feel like Ayani is just really heartbroken over uh, Hayate and she's lashing out in unpredictable ways. By killing your future sister-in-law. Yep. Okay. Odd motivations here, lady. Um, also, your brother, or the, the the man you love, he left the palace. The, you, you did, you're not honor bound to kill him, just me? Like, do you got beef? You got beef? Like, when I invited you over that one time so we could have girl talk, was it not girly enough talk for you? I mean, what the fuck is the problem here, Ayani? Maybe she's, like, overcompensating because she's like, I was supposed to hunt down my lover. I couldn't bring myself to do it. Now I am bound by honor to actually do something I hate, but I'm going to do it this time. Killing his sister and my princess yeah. slash queen yep. slash Roka. Um, but she can't because Leon busts in and interrupts the whole thing. She has to disappear because I guess she can't be like, she pulls a Batman. Like, oh, I can't yeah. be seen here. Poof. Um, whatever. Okay. Well, she's not supposed to be there. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's invite only. No, there's like people. There's like, uh, there's an audience to this. There's people just chilling out, partying on the beach, Sam. Those are the ninja guards. They're just on off hours. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, all right. So their fight busts through several rooms. One of them where uh, Christy has now decided that Max is just too sexy to hate. <laughs> yeah, that's what she's decided. <laughs> she's like, all right, fine. I'll just... Ride that dong, but you play this any other way, and I'm ripping those nuts off. <laughs> Clean off. And it ends with Leon following into a pool where Zach has uh, du been duped into removing his drawers. Yeah, and they had to scrub. There's digital scrubbing of the dong here. Oh, yeah. Did you notice that? No, yeah. I wasn't looking. There was full frontal, apparently, the uh, first time around. The Chinese audience didn't like it. No, I bet not. Hmm. Okay. Uh, next, Tina and her dad are matched up, and he stomps in, and he's like, uh, let's fight. And she's in bed with Christy because her place is wrecked or something. I can't remember why Tina's in the bed with yeah. Christy. Uh, because like, dad, Christy was, here. She was boning down on Max, and then uh, Kasumi got thrown through the wall ah, right. onto the bed, yeah. and so they can't sleep there now. And then Kevin Nash is like, oh, sorry, honey. I walked in on your hot stuff. This is a really funny scene, I think. Yeah. It's like, he's just, no, I'm not judging. You know, I like the ladies, too. <laughs> See you in the morning. Going to bust your ass. <laughs> Bye-bye, sweetie. Beat the shit out of you, darling. Uh, it's nice that you're, you know, you're comfortable with yourself, and I support your decisions, but I'm going to totally give you the big elbow. Yeah. Uh, this so was they, the power bomb, remember? Yeah, the power bomb. That's right. And the power bomb performed by a guy as big as Kevin Nash is pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. So th they're going to hold off till next to the next morning. And Tina's like, God, it seems like I had something to do today. What was it? Oh, I was going to go get acupuncture. So she's getting acupuncture blowing off her dad fight. Like, no, you were going to fight your dad this morning. Oh, I was going to go get my nails done. That's what it was. Tina. Just hanging. In. And then he's like, super jump. And he, like, jumps from the beach, like, 89 feet or something, <laughs> onto this little bamboo raft with these unsuspecting ninja guard girls that are just having a nice time. Uh -huh. And they get, like, splashed, and he's like, oh, sorry. <laughs> and then he's like, oh, no, does Chrissy know about Kasumi? You're really playing the field, honey. Good job. Right. <laughs> You're like, good lord, Kevin Nash, you're amazing. So they, their rules, I guess they get to freelance the rules when they fight because she's like, first person to fall in loses. 
No, it's you need a knockout. That's the actual rules of DOA. Those were established. You don't get to make up your own rules when you're competing in a you know, fighting tournament, lady, whatever. Uh, and they have a pretty wild fight. It's fight jinx. It's awesome. Yeah. And Kevin Nash is awesome. And it's too bad he's only in this movie for this long. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Max is working on Helena. Uh to get because helena is the key they learn something like helena is the key to the vault or something yeah and so he's gonna butter her up to and seduce her so that she spills the beans or something or he finds out how to get in the vault but he can't because it's time for volleyball yep it's time for volleyball Mm -hmm. and then the fanboys are like there's not enough booby shaking (laughs) and i'm like this is plenty gratuitous, guys. These butts are fantastic. So Hayabasa uses that as a distraction to go sneak into Donovan's office. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he runs in there, and there's some guys, some guards, like three. He, he kills those guards. He kills those guards. He starts by snapping, giving the guy the neck breaker. Wait, there's been no death in this movie up to this point, and this guy's just trying to get into his office. He's killing guys just doing their jobs. Yeah, I and mean, right before he does this, he also has another, the second, my boner is unworthy. Right. <laughs> like, he really is like, I love you so much, but I am I am lower than filth. You may not have my boner, I am unworthy. <laughs> and then as he goes through this process of getting into the office, he seriously goes through about 50 henchmen. He kills a lot of people. Where did these guys come from? Why? Like, I mean, at some point, he's he's still sneaking into the office, but you can't really sneak into an office when you leave a trail of corpses of about 50 guys. Somebody's and there's cameras everywhere, notice. and you have nanobots in you. Uh-huh. Yeah. Which is why he's captured. Yeah. Bad work, buddy. Um, so back at the volleyball tournament, uh, the but- Dorkmeyer's in the mix. Yep. Yeah, Iani Ion- Ion- shows up and uh, she uh, spikes the f- volleyball with a shuriken. Yep, <laughs> spiking the volleyball. That's another. Maybe that's why the the, the game fans are like, no more volleyball. <laughs> Jumping up and down, the ladies need to get wetter. <laughs> Spray them down. Uh, okay, so Kasumi goes to find her in the bamboo forest that is adjacent to the volleyball court, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and they fight in ridiculous fashion again. And we find out that the Ayani's like, I'm going to kill you. And then finally Kasumi's like, here's the deal. I'm a ninja princess. You actually can't if you wanted to. Yeah. I'm. You have a sword. I'm going to like use bamboo to kick your ass Mm -hmm. yeah so that fight goes poorly uh for aoni uh she just kind of runs away doesn't she she like she looks like she's going to fight to the death and make and force kasumi to kill her Uh. ending her heartbreak however kasumi's besties show up and she's like oh i gotta like crouching tiger hidden dragon the fuck out of here yeah right i can't be seen by these people hmm Okay, so Tina, she gets matched with Zach, uh, and they fight at the Forbidden Square, okay? It's the Forbidden Way. Uh-huh. Go in there. Rule breaker. You're not supposed to be here. Yeah. Uh, and both of them die from internal bleeding and uh, severed spinal cords. Yeah, they smash through rocks a lot. Yeah, they're dead. Uh, you can't do this. Um, but They didn't make it. Yeah, they make it. Uh, he seems like he's okay, actually. Uh, both of them. And and he's like, you've earned my respect. I'm sorry for trying to sexually assault you so many times earlier and being a total misogynist, but damn it, woman, you're a hell of a fighter. Yeah. You're like, sorry. And you're like, hey, you're not that bad, Zach. You're not that bad. <laughs> I'm rooting for you from now on. Uh, Helena and Christy get matched. And Christy, they fight in the rain. Uh, I don't know. Wet bikini fight. Yeah, wet bikini fight. Uh, and Christy wins quite easily. Handily. Yeah. She actually plays possum through half of the fight so that she can visually take 
uh, take mental pictures of all of Helena's tattoos, which are apparently uh, the code to the vault. Okay. All right. There's a couple of shots in here that are definitely those girls doing wire work and hitting the ground really hard. Yeah. 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 They these these ladies took it to the limit on this movie. They should all be proud of themselves. Mm-hmm. There's some they did some fine work here. Yeah, and so they think the they're like, "Okay, wait a minute. We were playing volleyball. Tina fought Zach. Uh I I fought Helena. Uh aren't we missing somebody? Isn't somebody who Hayabasa. Hayabasa's been gone this whole time. And they're Wait, like the guy from Ninja Gaiden's been kidnapped? How does that even possible? Yeah. Uh we should go look for him. What where's where's he been? Because it's her his, his yeah. turn to fight. He's one of the finalists. He is. And they're and like, where the fuck is he? This is also where like Dorkmeyer, who's supposed to be like doing all of the IT business. Mm-hmm. He's really sidetracked because he loves Helena. She just got beat up. He feels bad for her. He wants to leave. And Eric Roberts is like, yeah, go away. You need to leave anyway because I have to come in here and jack off all of the times. <laughs> With my this is a jack off room is what it is. Yeah. Oh, my God. All right. So they go in and they find a secret passageway to the control room. Uh, that leads them to getting locked in a gas chamber with Hayabusa. They find him laying down. And they're like, oh, Ryu. And then the, they get stuck in pod tubes. Yep. Good job, Supreme. Winter fighter. soldiered. Yeah. So Weatherby, while this is going down, he's comforting Helena uh, and tells her that Donovan killed her dad. That they were originally partners for DOA. Yeah. And Donovan wanted to take the company in a new strange direction. And dad was like, that's not what I'm here for. I'm here for tournament fighting. By and golly and beach volleyball and yeah, Epstein business. Yeah, the the normal stuff. And Donovan's like, oh, well, I want to do this weird thing. And uh, so you get to die. And Elena's like, my daddy. She's also like, Dorkmeyer, I love you. Yeah. What is your name? Scene. She can never get his name right. It's awesome. Uh, but she, Do- did, she does. She gets it right here. Yeah. That's why it's Dorkmeyer, I love you. Yeah. Uh, Donovan overhears this whole thing, and so he orders their deaths uh, because of the nanite cams that he's got. He can do whatever. So he sends a bunch of henchmen after that, and uh, she kills a lot of guys. But it's question mark killing? No, she doesn't kill anybody. She's using the hill ten. She's bonking them on the head. She's doing she's everything but killing a them. lot. She's... Slashing them away. She doesn't actually kill anybody. <laughs> slashing them away. <laughs> yes, like she slashes the sword by them to scare them off, <laughs> which causes they come them back, to do she, barrel rolls. Yeah, and she come. They have to dodge the sword so <laughs> vigorously that they fall down and knock themselves out. Or if they come back for more, she bonks them on the head. This scene. I mean, you are one hundred percent accurate in your description because there is no blood, none at no. all, and. Guys are flying through the air every time she slashes at her sword. And then, like, half of them don't move, and then half of them are rolling around at the end of it. Yeah. Like, what? Is is she? I don't... I No, these guys are killing themselves or knocking themselves unconscious. Because They're there knocking could be no themselves death. out. <laughs> and she is fully aware that if she was to slash them all up, those stairs would become a blood slip and slide, and everybody <laughs> would land on a sword at the bottom. She's done the right thing. Oh my gosh. Um yeah, so Donovan he's upping the game. It's time to unleash his super his secret super weapon and he goes into the the computer room or not the computer room, the captured combatant tube room mm-hmm. and with his centerpiece secret weapon which is a pair of sunglasses. <laughs> And then he downloads the data directly from their bodies rather than like, didn't we just gather this data? You're putting a little bit more pageantry into this than there needs to be, sir. <sighs> they don't even need to be there. He's got their, the, the nanites. He, he's been uploading yeah. that data the whole time. He could have just the gone to the control room and just jacked into with his sunglasses. And also, why just them? Why not just download all of the data? Right. That's ah, so dumb. 
<sighs> Dorkmeyer immediately is like, well, this is not the intention, stupid. You can just, oh, God damn it. He didn't. This is what you were doing when you, oh, this is why you chased me out of here. I thought you were just jacking off. Oh, you're so dumb. Fucking with all my shit. Yeah. Uh, so Max follows Helena and Weatherby into the IT room. They they are going through. They know that he's jacked in and he's downloading the data and they're trying to stop him, but there's too many layers. And uh, uh, they are, are also trying to free the pods where the ladies and Hayabusa are. Um, and they open up a secret door. And uh, Hayati comes in. Uh, the brother. Yes. They, well, no, this is Eric Roberts is like, now you can see the, the, the fruition of my master plan. And he releases, even though he's been keeping uh, Hayate completely up to training speed. Uh huh. He releases him and he's like, now watch this. And he's able to beat up Hayate with his sunglasses. Because his sunglasses tell him what's going to happen. And then he can, like, figure all that out and then make that data. T- like, really what happens is, like, I've got magic glasses, Karate Man. I know your moves. And as he's in the middle of that sentence, he gets punched in the face. His glasses are broken. Uh-huh. He falls down. Right. Yeah. See, he's he gets the Taskmaster's powers. <laughs> But the Taskmaster, like, they're part of his muscle memory. He doesn't yeah. just see things about to unfold. Like, think about this. If you, I mean, this is the ultimate seven-year-old boy thing. You watch yeah. a Chuck Norris movie, you see what Chuck Norris does, and then you go and do all those Chuck Norris moves, and you're like, yeah, I know karate. I saw them on video. <laughs> Yes. That's, that's not I how it works. I am a master of Chuck Chando. Right. I've seen his movies. That's what he has. What Donovan has is he can watch t- television of somebody doing karate moves. And then he can, like, do the moves to block. No, he doesn't have the muscle memory. You can't think that. Fa- it's so dumb. It's so dumb. The sunglasses are the dumbest. And the the real uh, linchpin on his plan is he's going to sell this to some stuffy white guys on the internet. And right. they're like, we got to stop him. And they're like, <laughs> Why? I've seen these guys on screen. I don't think they're dangerous. I think they can have all the magic sunglasses they want. What are they going to do with them? Oh, what no. are they going to do with it? They could be really good at karate tournaments if the stupid technology wasn't a made for TV commercial. Like late night. Like this is the Snuggie of karate products. <laughs> yes. What do you, it doesn't work and b if it did so what <laughs> yes uh-oh you hear about those guys they got the karate glasses they're downloading the most relevant data into their glasses <laughs> for karate fighting oh my god oh god i hope we i hope these guys can never afford virtual reality <laughs> don't let them have an <laughs> oculus <laughs> jesus the world <laughs> god damn it uh, I mean, even if they're bad guys, even if they're if if Osama bin Laden is one of these customers, who gives a shit? Yeah, <laughs> Osama bin also, Laden's karate. <laughs> well, Dorkmeyer is able to like stop the download uh-huh. or the upload or whatever. Right. So these these doofuses that are on screen that all look like doofuses are totally unable to realize their potential dreams of having the karate data. <laughs> And no one is like, oh, I sent it to the CIA. And nobody's like, oh, do you want them to have it? Like, that's never a question because the CIA gets it. And they're like, this is some dumb shit right here. <laughs> guys, come, come guys- in here. Come in here. You got to check out this guy's secret evil lair. He's selling sunglasses. That's his yeah. plan. <laughs> like, in a cubicle somewhere in the CIA, there's those glasses like, thumbtacked to the side of the cubicle and like every once in a while somebody walks by like hey are those the the karate master data glasses (laughs) yeah yeah those are dumb aren't they (laughs) yeah it's like next to what this is next to one of those singing fish it's the it's the setup for basically the other guys of the cia will ferrell and mark Wahlberg get sent to take this guy down because the actual cia guys are like what no (laughs) no 
Why are you sending me this? How did you get my email? <laughs> okay, so during the big fight with uh, Hiati, he gets tossed through the wall that leads to the tower that the ladies climbed up, and he's fallen to his death, by, but Ayani saves him. And she's like, oh, I'm not going to be a dick anymore. Uh, I love you. I'm glad you're alive. Yay. Yeah, I love you. Okay, so uh, Max has busted into the vault. He finds all the monies. It's zillions, but uh, he's he gets he gets dealt by Bane Man. This guy's name is Bane Man in the games. Bane Man. Bane Man. Not Bane Man. Yeah. No. Bane Man. Okay, so he's he's beat up. Uh, meanwhile, Helena is fighting Donovan. She's the only one that's left that's not uh, caged up, and uh, she loses because of his, mm-hmm. his sunglasses. Uh, yeah. Even though he didn't download her data at that point because she was not stuck in a tube. So then all the dorks that were paying like millions for this karate glasses uh-huh. were duped because Donovan just knows the karate. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> or he downloaded her data earlier because she also had the nanites in it because it's been uploading data to his control panel this whole time and you don't need to stick people in tubes to download their data. He just did that to be a real jerk. He was doing it for the people buying because they weren't going to think it was real without all that pageantry. Oh, yeah. yeah okay. He's selling karate glasses. Yes. You got to trick these people. <laughs> You can buy them in the back of comic books. <laughs> Come yeah. on. <laughs> if you, otherwise, you got to, you know, that's why you got to put on the pageantry. Otherwise, you're selling them for nine ninety nine and six box tops. <laughs> yeah. Still less of disappointing than the sea monkeys. Yep. <laughs> so Donovan sets his island to self-destruct because you can blow up an island. <laughs> yeah. Why not? <laughs> and why? Why is he doing it? Again, he was trying to dupe some rich guys out of a fortune with karate glasses. The jig is up. He's got to get out of there with what he's got. I mean, it's okay. So here's my problem. Donovan has got a pretty sweet gig. He lives on his own private island uh, where he has beautiful women come and have karate tournaments uh, for his entertainment where that somehow generate income for him. Uh, the prize money is $10 million and he's like, you know what? This life isn't good enough. I need to do these karate sunglasses. And my business partner is like, that's a dumb idea. I should kill him. That's so he breaks the law there. And then he breaks Mm -hmm. the law when he kidnaps his combatants and sticks them in tubes. Donovan could have kept the karate sunglasses if he, Mm -hmm. and not, ever killed anybody or stuck them in tubes and still been able to make this pitch and in theory make a bunch of money and still kept his dead or alive island yeah making karate Mis- glasses isn't illegal <laughs> no it's not it's just very stupid it's just very stupid oh my god now he's gonna blow up the whole thing and yeah. then where are you gonna get people to make more karate glasses with your your manufacturing is there too. Yeah. God damn it, Donovan. Oh my god. Classic case of throwing the baby out with the bathwater. Yeah. Oh, so Weatherby has gotten the ladies out of the tubes. They're now all fighting Donovan. Uh there's much fight jinx here. We're not gonna go into the fighting too much. But eventually Donovan loses his shades. They fall off yeah. and off the tower. These ladies are busting his ass pretty good, though. Yeah. Even with the sunglasses, he's getting his butt kicked. Implying, again, the karate glasses aren't very good, even if they work a little bit. They're not that good. Um, so Kasumi gives him the acupuncture move. Uh, she sticks it in the back of his neck, and he is paralyzed, leaving mm-hmm. him to suffer from his own poor decision of self-destructing his only source of income. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he gets burnt up, Everyone- too. Everyone else is blown to safety. Oh, no, they all die too, Sam. They do not make it no. because they hit the water and then it's an avalanche into the... They, they didn't make they it. They didn't make it. Nobody. All of them died. Everybody on this island died. You can't blow up an island and be on it. Like, there's nowhere to go. 
Yeah. I mean, Aquaman might be able to get away, but nobody else can. You're dead. Right before the explosion, when they jump off, they all dive and they're all diving into some water. They're all good divers. Mm -hmm. Did you notice how good at diving those girls were? From 60 feet up. Wait, even if it's 10 feet up for the purposes of the movie and then they're, you know, composited back in, they're good at diving. Yeah, good dives. (sighs) Not like Adrian Pazdar. (laughs) That's some solar babies. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Okay. uh, Yeah. So pirates show up, the pirates from earlier, and uh, they get their boat jacked by Tina. Again. Yeah. They get beat up again, and then she takes their boat. Right. And then everybody but her starts making out, and she's like, stop making out! God damn it. All right, so one week later goes by, and they're, the ladies are still teamed up, uh, and they are describing hot guys and who they want to date, uh, but it turns out that they're at Kasumi's cat palace, and they have to kill about 300 guards who are trying to kill Kasumi. Yep. That's how the movie ends. Uh-huh. Uh, okay. Interesting setup for a sequel. What would the sequel be? Uh, well, I'm assuming restoring Kasumi's honor as princess of the palace. And then that's not going a... back to the island that's been exploded. Yeah, the island's been exploded. All the money got blown up, too. All the money got blown up. I mean, this didn't work out for anybody. This did not work out for anyone. Nobody came out ahead by going to DOA. You should have just stayed home. Uh, whether Dorkmeyer did okay oh, yeah. Yeah. for himself in this. Yeah, he got a well, he lost his job. And, yeah, but and his patented he's... karate de- glasses. That was his. That was his senior thesis project. He probably didn't know about the glasses. He was like, "I've got all the data," and then Eric Roberts is like, "Cool, I'm going to sell him his glasses." <laughs> what? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. Did you say you were going to make karate glasses? <laughs> no. Why would I? Who would do that? Who would do that? Why is You're that gonna so make stupid? Karate glasses. <laughs> I mean, it sounds cool to me, but I, I'm not. That's not what I'm doing. Nope, nope, nope. Wish somebody made karate no, I was glasses. Going to send all this data to like sports medicine people, <laughs> the only people that could use it. <laughs> karate glasses. <laughs> God damn it. Okay. Um. First question. Worst plan ever. <laughs> I mean. This is so stupid. I mean, <laughs> my God. I mean, what is it, like, yeah, the, the guy has to do something nefarious. But, I mean, no villain can be <laughs> stupider than Donovan. I no. Mean, he's sitting on top of the world at the beginning of the movie. At the end of it, even if he survived, he's at the bottom <laughs> I mean, but yeah. he doesn't survive. He's paralyzed and then gets burninated. Even when he's like, Bayman, grab the money and get out. Let's get out of here. As long as these glasses make it out. And Bayman's like, I'm thinking the hundred mil is what we need to worry about here. Yeah, you'll probably dupe a couple of internet doofuses into the karate glasses, but you're not going to make a hundred million on them. And also, why blow up the island? Just leave. Just you're, leave. You're a James Bond villain. You've got a boat. It's down a in your secret boat too. cave. The chopper. You've got all the transportation methods to get out. Of. Clearly, I mean, just leave. Come back later. <laughs> What's that, boss? You're not going to stick around for the end of the tournament? No, I got a meeting in Hong Kong. Okay, see ya. Right. Oh, man. Then he comes back. And he's like, ha ha, I sold the karate glasses. And he's like, you did make the karate glasses and somebody fucking bought them? What? <laughs> What'd you get for them? I mean, whatever. What whatever. Is the, what's the price tag of karate glasses, Sam? If $100 million is secondary, he's got seven guys on the internet on the hook for about a billion dollars each on these karate glasses. That's 
it's got to be. They're worth more than $100 million. He blew up $100 million to sell karate glasses. <laughs> I mean, God damn it. <laughs> Yeah, Donovan's the worst. <laughs> Thank God they cla- they cast Eric Roberts in it. Anytime you say I'm going to spend thirty million dollars in a movie and it's going to have Eric Roberts as the main villain, I'm like, whoa, you're not going to get that back. <laughs> but thank yeah, God like, they did, they because did you couldn't have done a dumber villain. And when you have one that dumb, you have to have Eric Roberts play it. You have to have no one else could pull off karate glasses no. besides Eric Roberts. <laughs> uh, Ah, oh, man. Yeah. Okay. Sam, you got any questions? I don't. Okay. It really sews itself up pretty well, other than that sort of, I guess they're going to kill all those men now. I've got one uh, that that I would like to hear your argument on. Uh, okay. I have my own argument. Has jiggle physics made the world a better place? <laughs> I don't know that I have an argument on that. Like, I haven't really ever thought about that. Uh, my initial reaction would be no. <laughs> I would now like to hear what you have to say on this subject. Well, I don't know if it's benefited the world, but I think it's okay. So, so I did some digging on this and basically because live physics, gravity, uh, movement is really hard to do. Most of the time you see yeah. physics, it's it's an animation. Uh, but DOA was one of the first places, the first programming that actually had live rendering jiggle physics. And yes. so basically the improvements that, that video games have seen recently, say uh, uh, s- definitely in Cyberpunk 2077, I just got done with uh, Horizon Zero Dawn. Um, lots of really good cloth physics that mm-hmm. we didn't have before where a lot of the times NPCs or, or game characters, like especially if they were wearing a dress and they had to walk, you would see the dress. The dress would essentially become pants when they moved yeah. because the cloth didn't have any physics assigned to it. And because even if you had, it's very resource intensive to render all those physics at once. So basically, my point is is that the code that is still being implemented in uh, with hair physics, uh, animal fur physics, mm-hmm. um, and, and obviously cloth physics has made immersion so much better in video games. And it's all from dudes wanting to have boners while playing video games. Yeah. I If you're talking about has it made the programming world better? Yes. Yeah. Um. They, I believe, in more like in cyberpunk, I don't think they're still using springs. Aren't they using uh, particle bags, yeah, basically? Yeah. So they're actually making boobs like real boobs now in imaginary boob land. Uh-huh. But in the early days of this, they actually just have the sort of surface morphing. And there's just springs attached to the nipple. So that yes. they, that's the way they jiggle like that. And that's where... That is apparently more desirable than the real thing because that's what Black Desert Desert is, is just springs oh everywhere gosh. in everything. Jiggle, jiggle, jiggle. <laughs> yeah, either way, I appreciate the uh the 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 contributions that the that boner thirteen year old boners have made to the world because, you know, it's like the porn industry. So many inventions have been you know, sp- they they're it's like NASA, you know. With that with NASA is porno. Both of them have gifted us so much to our lives. <laughs> sure. I mean, if you're going to argue that boners are making the world a better place, <laughs> it's that back to the Elon Musk scaring me for humanity. But he's our last hope and he's a raging hard on made of cocaine. And also this week's host. Well, actually, last week's host of Saturday Night Live and cast members said, nope, I'm not doing it. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> I'm not showing up. He's a dick. Huh? I saw that that was going to happen. I didn't. I didn't catch it. No, I didn't watch it either. I really hate the Elon Musk. Uh, it's it's no surprise that his one of his most popular pop culture moments was when he was on the Joe Rogan show because both of those guys should take a bath together. Fuck them. Uh, anyways, 
uh, dead or alive uh final recommendations i'm gonna go first yeah i liked it i was very taken aback by how much i liked it because i was expecting to hate it because of the amount of worst movie ever uh lists that this movie gets placed on um i was expecting silent hill the movie i was expecting bayonetta the movie um, I was expecting, obviously, a dungeon siege, as I said, and instead I got, I, I, you know, I got another video game classic. This, to me, is up there with um, Mortal, Mortal Kombat 1 still sits at the top of the heap, um, but now this is up there with uh, Double Dragon and uh, uh, what's the other one I'm trying to think of? Like Rampage? Yeah, oh, Rampage. Um, just a... I mean, there, there. This is a very specific do. This isn't for everyone, but, but for me and people that like my taste in movies, absolutely, this was a do. This is my favorite video game movie. Okay. I own it. I've watched all the deleted scenes. I've seen it four times. I love it. It has a bunch of stuff that I hate, like the, the new metal soundtrack that they tone down and make very palatable. Mm-hmm. Like, there's a lot of. Mid two thousands shit I hate in movies. The editing that that they're like. Well, the reason you hate it is because people haven't put in too much of it in one bag and then shaken that bag vigorously. Yeah, right. And that's what this movie does: is it takes all that stuff and it sh- puts way too much in the bag and it shakes it vigorously. Yeah, you you should absolutely hate this movie and you don't because like there's so much of that early two thousands, mid two thousands, like the editing. <laughs> you know uh, sweet or uh, um uh, swipes that go too fast and, and the swipe is caused by an object like like the volleyball lots of there was lots of transitions via objects in this with swooshing sounds and like you know music accompanying the transition uh uh stings um that in a different movie we would have absolutely hated but it when they just works here when they punch people, it makes jet noises. Oh my gosh, we never even talked about the sound effects, the 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 sound editing. There's oh, when yeah. Kevin Nash gets kicked in the head, he hears Tweety Bird sounds, and I normally would absolutely hate it. And I don't know why it works so good in here. It works so good because they didn't give up on it, and the the reason it fails so many times in these other movies is they just didn't realize how much of it they were going to have to do to make it cohe- cohesive. Yeah. And because this movie embraces the absolutely ridiculous levels of post-production work that you're going to have to do to sustain that feeling, uh-huh. it works because they don't give up on it. And they did the, the goddamn way and it cost 30 fucking million dollars. Right, right. And was yeah. never going to make that back ever in any parallel universe. It's no. got Eric Roberts in it. Wow. What a terrible decision financially. But man, thank you. What a gift to me. Uh-huh. Um, speaking of video games and Mortal Kombat, I would be remiss if I didn't discuss 2021's Mortal Kombat currently streaming on uh, HBO Max. Uh, I do believe that this will be an episode probably several years down the road if we're still kicking around by then. Um, but uh, this thing that HBO is doing with Warner Brothers, wow, are they basically just gifting us every single SMAP phenomenon for next year. I mean, Tom and Jerry was very bad. Uh, my seven-year-old loved it. Um, Jackie absolutely hated it. And then the 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 Kong versus Godzilla thing that everybody's been all crazy about, how stupid it is. Uh, everybody loves that movie. Uh, it's a cultural phenomenon now. Then this Mortal Kombat shit happens. And Sam, you're missing out, buddy. It is yeah. amazingly bad. I mean, let let me warn you in one way, and this is the this is the big gripe that everybody has with it, and why it's got low reviews that don't love that don't have a bad podcast. Um, it's table setting, as you would say. It's all about the sequel. I mean, sure. There's not even a tournament. There's not even Mortal Kombat in Mortal Kombat. Oh, good lord! Yeah, but wow is. I mean the problem with the problem with the table setting movies that I think you experience is the uh either the sidelined plot 
that the, the, like, okay, well, we, we're going to feign semblance of a plot and make it about these characters. So we're, we're, while we're introducing these characters so that they can have the experience in the second movie, they're all going to have individual plot lines and really add some depth to these guys. And you're like, I don't care. I want to see the monsters smash the city. Um, that's not what happens in Mortal Kombat. What happens in Mortal Kombat is the dumbest plot of any video game outside of DOA at all. The plot of the film is Mortal Kombat. Shang Tsung is the leader of, of the Outworlders who, if they win one more Mortal Kombat, they will take over the Earth. Yes, that's a dumb video game plot, but that is the plot of Mortal Kombat. So instead, what they're going, the plot of it is, instead of having the tournament, what we're going to do that, that takes place in a month, just so you know, a month down the road, we're all going to fight and have Mortal Kombat and whoever wins gets to take over Earth. Okay, cool. Um, but that's a month away. Let's just fight now. <laughs> <laughs> Outside of Mortal Kombat. The rules that the old gods have set up as explained by this film is that in order to take over Earth or Outworld or whoever, uh, it must be during the Mortal Kombat tournament. So this is just freelancing. Shang Tsu is like, uh -huh. let's fight these guys. They look like dicks for no <laughs> reason. <laughs> <laughs> it is so dumb. And then, uh, all, like every the whole thing is about everybody trying to get superpowers. So uh, you know, because Sub Zero is like really tough, right? And, and is Sub Zero really tough? I don't know. That's a question for another time. But. Uh, like the shenanigans that happen is just as dumb as uh, any of these other video game fighting movies. I mean, it has to be seen. The other problem with it is that they introduce a new character that is not a Mortal Kombat or, uh named Cole Young. He's he's not in any of the games. He's just in this. And the guy sucks. He sucks. And so I can understand why people really didn't like this movie because Cole Young blows. I mm -hmm. loved Cole Young because he blows. When he gets <laughs> his suit, A, he looks like Justin Long, and you can't have Justin Long in a karate movie. <laughs> no. <laughs> For a guy that looks like him, um, the whole time I'm like, God, what a dork. Then <laughs> when he gets his superpowers, his I'm not going to spoil it, but his superpower is the dumbest thing ever. It's basically... He gets he gets superpowers, but he also it's accompanied by a new look, and it rivals the awful costume design that is in Double Dragon when they also get their superpowers. Mm -hmm. And I think it all happens for no reason. Like <laughs> all, the Mortal Kombaters who get fatalityed, I don't think any of them actually die. I think Shane Su says a says a line like, "Well, that was nice. I think I'll just resurrect those guys." <laughs> Good lord! I mean, it's so bad. I loved it. Uh, it's a it's a number one contender along with Kong versus Godzilla for uh, best bad movie of the year, without a doubt. I mean, if, if this is where we're going, we got no places to go but up. Uh, with with well, I mean, we do. This could be a good year for bad movies. I mean, I'm excited with, with the the Warner Brothers HBO team up because it stunk so far. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> nothing good. Uh, so there you go. It's a do. Do from me, for sure. Uh, you got anything else? I do not. Okay. All right. Well, what are we doing next week? I don't know. I'll have to get in touch with Tucker and find out, because I believe we're back on his pick. Okay. I'm still saying we should do a three-way. Let's do a three-way call. Let's get all three of us all involved. All right. As, as soon as I can People fucking do it, it all the time. All the big podcasters do it. I know, but those people do that for their jobs, and I have an actual job that isn't this, and so I have to do extra work, and it's hard to figure out. I, I, I think you just have to hit record, and then I do everything. <laughs> That's fine. As long as we... we just, uh, okay, we're going to have to test it. That's okay. all I care about. Right. We'll see what happens, guys. So have a great week. Uh, get to the chopper. Chopper.